time to learn how to use the bandsaw. We have three bandsaws in our shop and they are located back here. We have bandsaw number one, bandsaw number two, and right back here is bandsaw number three. I'll be showing you how to use bandsaw number two today. If you're working on a bandsaw and you forget what you need to do, there's a sign on each tool that tells you the basic things you need to know. On this one, your fingers are two inches from the blade. Your guard is one quarter inch above the work. No fingers in the path. Use the dust collector for extended operation. If you need to make one cut, that's okay, but if you're making a lot of cuts, this does make a lot of dust. Hearing protection is recommended for extended operation and return fence if removed. This one does not have a fence on it, but if I look at the one behind me, this is the fence from bandsaw number two, and this is the fence that lives on bandsaw number one. So if this were on the machine, we'd put it back when we were done. The bandsaw is one of the safest tools in our shop. This one has a lot of protection around it, and the dynamic forces on this make it very safe to use. Here's what's inside. This is something you'll never do. This opens up the case. Just to give you an idea of how this works. This is what's inside a bandsaw. Okay, what we have is a blade that runs continuously around a top wheel and a bottom wheel. Okay, inside there are also met or ceramic guides that hold the, gu hold the blade in place. That's what keeps the blade from drifting right or left. And same thing up here on the top. There are ceramic guides that keep the blade from drifting right or left. Okay, if you mess with these screws here, that will change the position of those guides, which will dull the blade and make it generally unfun to use. It'd be like cutting a stake with a piece of wood. Okay, when this is in operation, these wheels will be spinning and the blade goes continuously around in a loop. What holds the blade in place are two, op two uh, adjustments. One is the tension knob, which is right here. That adds tension to the blade to keep it tight so that it doesn't drift. This is not something you should touch. Another item not to touch is the blade tracking, which is on the back. That changes the steering of the, of the wheel so that the blade sits correctly forward or back on the wheel. When it's tuned correctly, you can see this white stripe right here. The blade should be centered on the wheel. If we were to adjust that, that blade would drift forward and fall off the wheel, rendering the tool unusable. Okay. So, when we're ready for operation, this door should be closed. This guard should be up. Okay, you should not have to put that down ever, but if you do notice that it is down, it is okay to raise that guard up. Make sure the case is locked. Okay. To use the bandsaw, the first thing we need to do is set the guard height. Right now it's on the table, and I have my piece of wood ready to cut. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen this knob right here, just a little bit. Use this lever right here to raise the guard, just high enough to put my board under it. Then I'm going to drop the board down, or drop the guard down, all the way to the board, and then lift it up just a little bit. I want the board to be loose, but my finger to not go under here. Once I've done that, I'm going to tighten this knob, take my hands off, and double check to make sure this is loose. This guard should be a quarter of an inch above your work. Okay, and I can see the blade just in there. Okay, as I'm working, my fingers need to be two inches away from the blade. The blade is here, so my fingers at all times will be at least two inches away. It is okay to work on one side of the blade or the other with both hands. They don't have to be side to side. Okay, I've got my eye protection on. I'm not going to wear hearing protection because I'm only making a single cut, but if I were going to be working here all period, I'd want something on my ears. Okay, you're going to make two cuts on this. Normally we wouldn't use pen in class, but for clarity so it shows up in the video, I will use pen. The first cut you'll make is just a straight line. The thing about the bandsaw is it's not really good at making straight cuts. 
its forte is making curved cuts. So if you're not exactly on the line, that's okay. Generally, you want to stay to the outside of the line, and then we can sand off what's left. This is a safety test, so again, it doesn't matter if you're on the line or not. Okay. On some bandsaws, the most dangerous place to stand is on the, so on the right side. If this blade were to break, it would come shooting out this side of the machine. We have this guard around our blade, so I can stand here with relative certainty, but I want to be careful. Before I turn it on, I need to know where the controls are. This is the power control here. If I simply push the green button, nothing happens. First, I have to pull out the red button. Then I can push the green button to start it. To turn it off, push in the red button. This tool also has a foot brake right here. When you step on the brake, it will disengage the power and also apply a brake, just like a car's brake. Do not get in the habit of using this to turn off the power. I want you to always use the red button to turn off the power so that when you're on a different tool, this is the thing you're always looking for, and it's always going to push in. Find that red button, know where it is to push it in. Okay, This is a one-person tool, so even though it may be tempting for your friend to stand over here and run the power switch, don't let them. That's how we broke a blade last year. One person turned the power off while the other person was doing something else, bent the work just right, and it broke the blade. Okay, so we're going to make our first cut. Remember, our fingers are two inches away. We're going to stay out of the path of the blade. So even though this is two inches from the blade, I could feed my hand right in there. Okay, this little notch right here is your guide for where that, that two inches is. So pull out the switch, push the green button. Wait for the saw to reach speed. And we begin our cut. Turn the power off. And I can step on the brake now to stop the saw. Once the saw is stopped, I can remove my scrap, throw it in a nearby garbage can, and return the guard to its original position. The second cut you're going to make is a curved cut. Now, if I were to try to just make that cut with this blade, it would try to bend the blade because the blade is straight and the curve is not. As I did this, it would try to bend the blade into the ceramic guides and it could ultimately either break the blade or pull the blade off the wheels. So what we need to do anytime there's a curved cut is we need to make what are called relief cuts. And we're going to cut several relief cuts about as far apart as the blade is wide. So if my blade is 3 eighths of an inch wide, I'm going to make my relief cuts about three, inch, three eighths of an inch away. These do not have to be perfect. It doesn't matter which direction they go because these boards are going to fall off and go in the garbage anyway. What is important is that you stop at the line. If you make your relief cuts into the line, your final piece will have a big notch out of it. We want to avoid that. It's better to leave a little bit of wood on and sand it off later than it is to have a piece of wood that's the wrong shape. You can't glue the pieces back on very easily. One more time. We're going to raise the guard, set the wood under it, bring it down to the wood, raise it slightly so my fingers still can't get in there, tighten that, and we're going to make our relief cuts. Every time I get to the end of a relief cut, I'm going to stop the saw using both the power and the foot brake. Wait until the blade stops and then back out. If I back out while the blade is running, I could pull that blade off of the wheel. Because remember, when I'm pulling it down here, it's also pulling off the wheel that's up here. So here's how we do our relief cuts. Power's off, back up.
Okay, now that we have our relief cuts made, the very last thing we need to do is cut the curve. When you cut this, you're going to rotate more than you push. If I just push this through, it's going to cut a straight line this way. So before you even begin your cut, take a look at what you have. You're going to start on this tangent here, and you'll end on this tangent here. So when you make your cut, it's going to look like this. Notice the board barely moves forward as I do it. Watch it again with the blade. The other thing you might notice as you're cutting is pieces might get stuck back in this throat plate here. So if you're pushing and it can't move forward, stop the saw, pull your piece out, raise the guard, and remove any pieces that are in there. And then you can start over. You probably won't have a perfect edge the first time. That's okay. You're gonna stay a little bit outside the line and use the sander to clean up your edges later. Let's finish this cut up and be done. Okay, and you can see as I made the cut, every time I hit a relief cut, that piece would pop off. Okay, so we have our cut here. A little bit of work to do on the sander, but that's not a big deal. Last thing we need to do is raise the guard. Take our scrap pieces out. Throw those into the garbage can. Goodbye, scrap pieces. And lower the guard. Sorry for the high voice, it's late. I can't help myself. And there you have the bandsaw. Put my scrap piece down here, make it nice and neat so somebody else can use it. And we are done.